to another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. And today I'm here once again with my wonderful co-host, Rachel Arnett. And today we have two special guests because of the theme of today's episode. Today's episode is going to be about children's programming. And we have two self-proclaimed experts in the field. The first one is my daughter, Jen Molinari. And the second one is Rachel's son, Zachary Arnett. Who's currently using me as a jungle gym. <laughs> and both of them are very big experts in the area of children's television. Do you like children's shows? <laughs> Zachary, we understand that there's lots of great programs on for kids. Can you have a seat in your chair? That would be great. Good now, job. one of the key things we know, as you can see by our theme, is that Disney <laughs> does lots of great things on Disney Junior. And we've been watching some of them. Yes, I've been doing my homework. I've been watching all by myself. People would think I'm a little bit of a loony, but I've been having a good time. Oh, it's so much fun. It's a great thing. It's great. Th those shows have so much more depth than I ever expected. So first, I'd like to introduce a show that I did not know even existed in a new version, The Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Why don't you sit down so you can talk to us about Mickey Mouse Zachary? Clubhouse? Zachary? Who's on the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse? Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. And who else is on it? Goofy. Goofy? Donald Duck. Donald Duck? Daisy. Daisy Duck's on it, too. Anybody else? Minnie. Minnie, whose ears I'm wearing because I'm a big Minnie fan, <laughs> just saying. And now, Jen. One of the things I found interesting is this version of the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is not like the other Mickey Mouse Club shows that we've seen in the past. This is, first of all, it's a cartoon. It is not live. Tell us a little bit about the show. So Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, every day, uh, you know, when they come in, you say the magic words to bring up the clubhouse, and then uh, all the wonderful characters that Zachary listed come on up, and they do a roll call which is like in the beginning of the original Mickey Mouse Club. Um, and then after that, it's all of these different like adventures that they have and they need help from their friend Toodles, mm -hmm. who has the Mouse tools And the Mouse tools um, are useful things that help them along the way in their adventure every time. Now, one of the phrases that I was even taken aback when they said it near the beginning of the show which just warmed my heart. And I was a child of reruns of the original Mickey Mouse Club, was Miska Muska. In just a minute. But what are they saying this time, though? They go Miska Muska. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Do you, have, do you know that? Instead part of that? Mouseketeers. What, what is, what's the magic words? What are the magic words for the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse? I will watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and then I'll see. He'll You're going to watch it, it again and check see. it out. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Who's your favorite character on the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse? Do you want to think about that a minute? Goofy. Goofy. Oh, we got a Goofy fan here. And, you know, I have to say, Mr. Topol's a big Goofy fan, so... He's, a, he's big in our household also. We like Goofy. We like Goofy. One of the nice things, though, that I noticed as an adult watching it, because as I said, I did watch this on my own. I did not watch it with a child near me, <laughs> is that besides seeing what evidently would be engaging for a tot, this particular show had a lot of education incorporated okay. into it. Um, yeah, when I, when I watch it with Zach, it's great because they're talking about shapes, they're counting, they're dividing. They're even I going know. through some social skills like teamwork. I know I need water. Okay, we can get you some water. We'll get you some water in a minute. Absolutely. We don't want anybody getting thirsty in this room. <laughs> but um, I'm always thirsty. Okay. Okay. And the other thing we noticed is that there are a lot of what I would call multi-level inserts into the show <laughs> that keep me engaged as an I adult. For example... Head. 
I have to say, I when I if I watched with shirt. a child like Zachary, who has pockets on his shirt, who has pockets on his shirt, he's making sure we all see that. <laughs> I, I, I only got what? one. You only oh, got one. one pocket. But I bet if you had more, you could count them. Because of Mickey Mouse. Because of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. So it only had a much, as much characters as you told us. That's true. You're right. You You're want, right. You want to sit down? But one of the things they do is, like I said, they do multi-level entertainment. For example, we saw jokes that were definitely throwbacks to other shows or hints to things that if you didn't know about them, yeah. as a child, it would go over your head. Absolutely. Uh, for example, they were delivering a pot of soup, which I thought was hysterical, <laughs> To a sick friend, yeah. to a sick friend, and they were delivering this pot of soup in a little basket. Can you sit on your bottom? And of all things, Minnie Mouse picked a little red cape with a little red hood to yep. wear on the way. <laughs> yep. And they ran into a whole lot of dilemmas along the route, and didn't take a it felt long to see it, but it was kind of fun to watch a Mickey Mouse version of the Little Red Riding Hood taking place before my eyes. I thought it was both cute but funny. And there were other things that were amusing about it. For example, there was something offered in those mouse tools that you talked about, mm -hmm. where they offered to put in this soup pot for someone who was sick a really hot red chili pepper. Ooh, do you like red hot now, chili peppers? Now, they didn't say it's a red hot chili pepper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean the group. What they said was they offered the red hot chili pepper, and they were like, they're like, Okay, and you're out of it. Now, only someone who knew what they were looking at would be amused, so I got mm -hmm. a giggle out of it. Yep. A child might be like, all right, whatever. But we go on from there, and that's how it was working. Yep. I thought the show was adorable. But there's another show that I know my daughter is very enthusiastic <laughs> yeah. about as an adult that's also a Disney show. And what show is that? The Lion Guard. Do you know The Lion Guard? He's from The Lion Guard. He is from The Lion Guard. Do you remember name? I always saw her on the line Garden Grandma's room. Ah, in Grandma's room you saw it. Grandma's, okay. Um, yes, we have the, there are five uh, members of the Lion Guard in front of my mom's computer here is Bunga. He's the bravest. And the Lion Guard is a show mm -hmm. that basically extends the movie The Lion King into a series. Mm -hmm into next generations. So this is the third generation now. Cause, I think. Yeah, because he's, I mean, he's now the... <laughs> he can take it. You can take You, can you go take Bongo. Simba's grandson. No, he's Simba's son, Simba's but son. he's... Oh, that's right. The younger brother of Kiara. So if you saw yeah. Lion King 2, okay. it's like in between okay. the it's end and the beginning. <laughs> So we have now Thank generations you. of a family, and so people, for example, like myself, who took my children when they were young mm -hmm. to see The Lion King. Now we have the whole Lion King next generation, only once again, there's a purpose here. And let's talk about The Lion Guard. Mm -hmm. Now, you've watched it as well. Yeah. So do you see the purpose here that it's greater than just entertainment? Yeah, I, th I think there's, there's so much that they talk about bravery and teamwork and family. I think there are a lot of lessons that, and, and clearly it's entertaining, but I think, <laughs> I think that kids and their families can really have good talks about things like um, protecting, protecting what's yours and how to do that without hurting other people. Absolutely, you can go back to your chair. So I think one of the things that's great about this show is that you really get a lot out of it that you can then talk to your kids about. Zach and I have talked about a few episodes after, um, like what happened, why did that happen, and things like that. Uh, now, do you, I know you watch it for entertainment purposes, <laughs> but what is it that has been so engaging? Because you mentioned actually a few of your friends watch it who mm -hmm. do not have children. Yeah, my husband watches it. My sister-in-law watches it. She is not into kid stuff at all, but she really loved Lion King. And so mm -hmm. when she watches Lion Guard, she gets like that throwback. And so she likes it because mm -hmm. there's those familiar characters. And it's just 
fun and you remember the old characters, you like the new characters, they make it really um, entertaining on many ages, I think. Absolutely. I, I think that one of the things that this also does is it demonstrates, like The Lion King did in many ways in the film, the importance of not just values, but the relationships in families mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how they're developed and how they pass down what's important from one generation to another and hope that the next generation will even extend those values. And that was something I thought was really evident. It's not like I watched many of the episodes, yeah. but you could even see it instantly mm -hmm. that the level of responsibility is there responsibility to and for others and for the environment is also illustrated in the series. And I thought they did that beautifully. I mean, does that seem to be a thread through much of it? Definitely. And it's not just blood relatives, like the Lion Guard themselves, they're friends, but they consider themselves family. So it's nice because it connects um, the fact that I have friends who feel like family, um, and exactly. so it's it's nice you have all of your family blood related and not blood related and now we're going to take a little pause literally just to take a moment and let Zachary enjoy some playtime <laughs> with <laughs> Jen and I'm going to say thank you so much Zachary for coming and visiting with us today we really enjoyed you, and Jen, thank you so much for your input. Yes, of course. <laughs> thank you so much, and we'll be back in just a moment. And we're back with a little more, but a few less people on our yeah. show, Rachel. <laughs> Yeah, we decided to let our little nursery school go. <laughs> and so Zachary and Jen have left the room to go have more fun outside playing in the beautiful sunshine while we've got some nice sunny Absolutely. days now. Absolutely. Uh, our next stop, because I do not want to miss out on this, are some of the special shows that mm -hmm. you probably grew up with. Yep. Um, some so even excited. I grew up with that were featured primarily, I would say, on PBS, a few on network programming mm -hmm. from, I don't want to say way back when in ages <laughs> too much, but we certainly were not grown-ups yet. Absolutely. So I'm going to take us back first to a show that actually currently is airing on HBO, mm -hmm. new episodes, and then older episodes and repeats are airing still on PBS, and that would be Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. You can't have a children's episode without you featuring talk, Sesame Street. You have to talk about Sesame Street. Now, were you a Sesame Street child? I was. I knew the song. I used to dream that I was, in fact, going to Sesame Street. Oh, really? I, used, I got a rubber ducky just because the rubber ducky song. <laughs> <laughs> Sesame Street, all the way. It's how I learned a lot. That's right. <laughs> about the world. That's, that was one of the best things about it, I think. That's why my parents loved it is that I learned so much from that show. I thought that show was absolutely magnificent, and I felt that um, my kids learned a lot as well. I, I really believe they, the show started a little bit after I was young enough to have enjoyed mm -hmm. it. I was a little bit older. I was still a child, but an older child when it began airing. Um, and I would honestly say, though, they taught some of the best life lessons. Absolutely did. And they have developed the show. One of the things nice about Sesame Street is it was not stagnant. Mm -hmm. As the world evolved, so did Sesame Street. It's As, one of the more inclusive children's shows that's out there, really. And, and remains, has been so from day one. Yeah. They've always had um, multiple ethnicities featured. Mm -hmm. Different languages. Different languages, different abilities yep. are also featured. Um, they talked about uh, feelings from all avenues of feelings mm -hmm. and where they're generated from, um, from marriage, from having babies. They mm -hmm. addressed all of that. And they even addressed in probably one of their penultimate earlier episodes, they even addressed death. Mm -hmm. When uh, one of their actual team passed away, and they had to teach six-year-old Big Bird what had happened to Mr. Hooper. 
Um, I don't think anybody who was a Sesame Street viewer would ever forget that episode. I, I think that the way that they don't shy away from difficult or mm -hmm. controversial topics but still handle it in a way that's kid appropriate is really phenomenal. I totally agree with you. Yeah. I, I, and it, it made, a, as a parent, my life easier addressing some of those issues mm -hmm. too. When we came across things that were not pleasant in the world, there was a way to address them that I saw as child friendly. Mm -hmm. And I think Sesame Street was a great guide for both children and their parents to walk through life's tough times together. Absolutely. And the video packets that they always showed, that was just something I noticed that, that you know, there was diversity in thought and action even in those as well. And moving on, another older PBS show that I actually did enjoy um, as it came on when I was, I think, a preteen, Electric Company, another PBS show. Mm -hmm. Not as long-lived, but certainly got a lot of attention. Music, excitement, uh, higher-level math, and school academic skills. And Yeah, they were not trying to hide the fact that they were educational at all. No. Which I, they're like, we're, we're learning here today, kids. We're learning, folks. But you would rock <laughs> out when you exactly. were learning. Exactly. You, you were enjoying it. Exactly. It was kind of that a, was it. It, it was, was a lot of lines fun. of Schoolhouse Rock, that idea that you can learn and have fun. And Schoolhouse Rock. I was yeah. going to go right into yeah. that one. To this day, the, uh, can you sing it? We the people, <laughs> in order to form a more perfect union. And then I would go into <laughs> conjunction, junction, yeah. what's your function? It's just too much fun. The fact that I'm remembering learning those. Mm -hmm. And having watched it the first time around as a kid. That I watched and, it second time around, probably. Right. And I'm not going to say, but I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> and I still remember it to this day. That's an impact. That's a quality impact. In addition, there were two Mickey Mouse Clubs. We talked about Mickey Mouse Clubhouse earlier. Mm -hmm. But there were two Mickey Mouse Clubs. One was before my time. One was a little bit after my time. <laughs> um, but the nice thing is, in both cases... They're not completely forgotten, even to this day, no, on the Disney not. Channel. Um, they remind you of the history. Mm -hmm. You see touches. That was what I was referring to yeah. earlier, with their magic words. Absolutely. And, and there's so much success that has come for so many of the cast members of the second generation. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a laundry list of talent. Oh, my goodness. Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, J.C. Chazé. And, and, and I like, and once again, that the talent doesn't shy away from their history. Mm -hmm. None of them would ever deny that this was one of their big breaks as young people. Oh, absolutely. I've never heard anyone say that they were embarrassed or they didn't want to talk about it at they, all. They, they're always talking about it all the time. There seems to be a pride in it, just like there yeah. was in the original Mouseketeers. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, we remember many of them and several of whom have passed, but... It was always something to be proud of, which mm -hmm. is one of the things that was neat about the Disney company. Absolutely. Is they gave you something to be proud of, and they didn't want it to be, you know, frivolous. Mm -hmm. They made it fun, and they made it learn. They gave you learning, but they also did give you the values. It's always mm -hmm. been with values as a hidden underlying force in all of the programming. Um, there's some other shows, and I'm mm -hmm. going to go way, way back now. This is one that I don't even know if Rachel's ever seen, because maybe some of you have seen and remember things like that started the realm of children's true programming, Captain Kangaroo. My dad always talks about Captain Kangaroo. Does he really? I have never seen it, but he always talks really fondly about it. And every once in a while, we'll see someone out, and he'll go, that guy looks like Captain Kangaroo. And the truth is, Captain Kangaroo had a setting of ensemble characters, all creative, some sillier than others, some more of the educational than the mm -hmm. others. And each of their episodes, while there was underlying learning because of the situations they would find themselves in, it was engaging, it was mm -hmm. creative, it was a bit out of the box because all the characters had strange and funny names. Um, coming soon, I don't want to forget to include this in our list of shows. If you haven't already been seeing it and watching it, Netflix will be airing the magic school bus which I think is why my sister became a science teacher is that really? show it and even though I became an English teacher now I do the mad science 
I have dresses that remind me of Miss Frizzle dresses. Like I have a space dress and I'm getting like a, a lizard dress <laughs> like what she with her little chameleon, chameleon that she would take with her. I am so excited. I don't even care if Zach doesn't like the show. I'm going to watch the show the second it's released. And, and that was such a great series of books, too. Oh. So not only did it get yep. children engaged in science, yep. it got children engaged in reading. Yep. Because they wanted to see these characters, and they didn't mind taking the book. No. And if it was slightly at a harder level than their typical reading yeah. level, that was okay, too. Yep. That was okay, too. And again, a really diverse cast of characters so that kids saw themselves in now, these characters. What I noticed was Lily Tomlin... Mm -hmm. will recreate her original Miss Frizzle, but there'll be also an additional Frizzle in the house. Yes, who's really the one taking over the the wheel. The wheel of the school bus, yes. and that is? Miss Kate McKinnon from Saturday Night Live, who is one of the best cast members I think the show has ever had, really. Certainly multi-talented. Oh. oh, my God. Unbelievable. So, you know, if you're an adult... Kate McKinnon is the new Miss Frizzle behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. Don't miss her, but Lily Tomlin makes an appearance. And to top it off, for all those people who are theater geeks enough to follow it for this alone, <laughs> the new theme song that you will hear at every episode is sung by... Lynn manuel Miranda. So, who can really do no wrong, as far as I'm concerned. He's won Emmys, actually, for work on Sesame Street in and the past as well. And, and he's just brilliant in this, and I love the fact that he probably takes an even bigger investment in programming, children's programming, yeah. now that he's got kid, yeah. yep. a child of his own. And I can't imagine this show having anything that would want me to turn it off from. No, there's nothing that I've heard makes me go, eh, I don't know. But now it, it will be weird. on Netflix. Yep. So if you don't have Netflix now, this would probably be a good time for you and your kids to get it. Although I think just about every household seems <laughs> to have it at this point. Or know somebody that has or, it. Or know, <laughs> has a really good friend they can visit and say DVR it for me. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> in the background there. Um, some of the other pieces that you might be willing to see this year and interested in seeing is if you just want your basic good old-fashioned cartoon mm -hmm. on the Cartoon Network, I discovered... Just going back, uh, reminders of cartoons of long past. A uh, silly little show called We Bear Bears. Another favorite of Zach's. And a favorite of mine, if I'm being honest. Okay, tell me yes. about that. So We Bear Bears is three, I'm going to call them late adolescent bears. There's, a pa there's Panda, there's Grizz, and there's Ice Bear. And Ice Bear is very serious, and Grizz and Panda are very much not serious. And it kind of takes them through all of these adventures and they, again, have a supporting cast of characters that's hilarious. But the show, again, as much as it's unbelievably hilarious, there's that underlying family values connection, and it's really heartwarming. And they do have a few episodes that kind of choke you up a little bit, like when they first um, are little and they're in a pet shop and people think they're dogs and they get separated, and your heart kind of breaks, but then they get back together. And it's wonderful. <laughs> And you take this like 15 minute show takes you on this intense emotional journey and then makes you really happy at the end of it. So for those people who mm -hmm. are interested in your basic, wonderful, good old cartoon, yep. it, they're 15 minutes in length, as yep. Rachel said. Yeah. So they're nice and short. Um, I've seen them on demand. I've seen clips on YouTube. Check it out. They're so funny. And another show on Nick Jr., because I wouldn't want to forget the Nickelodeon lineup. No, not at all. It's called... Paw Patrol, and at first I was like, Paw Patrol, and then I realized, of course, they're all little doggies yes. who are a patrol, <laughs> a, a team of do-gooders and rescue, rescuers. Led by Ryder, their, their human, not really owner, we'll say, call human friend, <laughs> compatriot, who kind of leads them. And he's in the control tower, like yes. Ryder sort of controls where everybody <laughs> is. Which, of course, you can imagine as we're saying this, it sounds incredibly <laughs> silly, but yes. Uh, it's this, I'd say Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and Paw Patrol are the two that Zach is always watching. Oh, okay. He's got a Paw Patrol sheets. He's got a Paw Patrol lunchbox. He's got Paw Patrol Keepa. Like he's got, if it's Paw Patrol, he wants it. And the thing that I found was interesting, um, because I actually watched Paw Patrol back-to-back -back with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse mm -hmm. when I was sort of getting ready for this to see what some of these shows were really, really like. I wasn't going to sit in the room and say, I don't know, 
Rachel, <laughs> it's all yours. All right. Um, what I did notice was as much as the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse was very education oriented, it had a lot of the interpersonal, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of education. There was counting. Mm -hmm. There was there was truly the recipe that they made. They talked about items that would go into a soup. They gave you choices. They give you options like a classroom would at a mm -hmm. young age. Yeah, it's more academically oriented. Abs absolutely, yeah. without question. But Paw Patrol is very much about interpersonal communications. Mm -hmm. How you get involved with other people, how you interact with others, how you make that interaction successful, and how you help them and guide them to making the best choices getting out of situations that seem that they could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Daring Danny X. <laughs> uh, I may know a little too much about Paw Patrol. Uh, but, you know, give, it, give us an example, sure, yeah. about one of those situations that you've seen happen. Yeah. So there's a character called Daring Danny X, and he really wants to be like an X Games athlete. So he's constantly doing things like taking the Paw Patrol boat and bringing it onto the middle of the bay because they're in... Um, they're in this bay and they go through and next thing you know he's in the middle uh -oh. of the bay and he's about to sink and they have to go out there and save him and every single time Sky will go out there in her copter and she'll save him and the thing is each of the characters has a special skill mm -hmm. for rescue but in addition what they're doing is you're learning how to act appropriately in the world mm -hmm. how to make positive choices and how to correct Absolutely. choices that oh, yeah. are not positive. There's, and that was something I thought was very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, very much about interpersonal choices. Um, and teamwork. Uh, it, definitely, it, definitely. The teamwork was great and they all cared about each other mm -hmm. in this little Paw Patrol, which yeah. made them family-like even though they weren't yeah. necessarily related. Yeah, they're not all the same breed of dog. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. And we know the human's not part no, of the family. I'm sure that's what you were talking about. <laughs> um, and then on top of that, then we can move on, because now that we're on the doggy subject, yes. which I'm having so much fun talking children's shows, I can't even begin to imagine I thought I would. <laughs> I go back to another show that I know my daughter was mm -hmm. very engaged in and got me engaged in uh, as a former public school teacher, a show called Wishbone. I haven't thought about Wishbone in years, but I loved that show. Uh, Wishbone was a story on PBS mm -hmm. featuring a Jack Russell Terrier yep. named Wishbone. And depending on situations that he or the humans in his life get into, mm -hmm. he will reflect upon it and think about how it would be solved, referring to classics in literature. Mm -hmm. And they would go back and take very significant pieces of literature mm -hmm. where Wishbone ultimately plays the focal character. For example, in The Three Musketeers, <laughs> D'Artagnan being played by a, a Jack dog. Russell, Jack Russell Terry. was hysterical. There's so much out there for everybody mm -hmm. in the world of children's television. I hope you'll explore it all on all the different networks. And... This has been Carolyn Talks Television with our very crazy day of children's <laughs> television with Rachel Arnett. And you can find me on all social media platforms at Carolyn Topol. And I hope to see you next month when we start getting into the holiday season. Yes. Just a hint.